when Jesus, Jesus, when Paul makes that statement, he says, you're just speaking mysteries in the air. Uh, okay, let me ask you this question before I move. Why do you think that he made a valid point on that? Because um, if you are speaking mysteries, that means that you're giving information that cannot be understood by the person hearing it. Ecstatic speech is babbling, um, and that babbling, that bubba, that is not uh, a mystery. That's just babbling. But what well, I believe well, Paul was saying. But, but wait a second. If, wait a second. Go ahead. Go ahead. As as he's speaking, <laughs> yep. Paul is literally telling them, and they and and, and everyone else today is going to say the same thing. They don't know what they're saying, are they? Do they? The person that's speaking no. in in in, in verse, I mean, chapter fourteen. Do they chapter know what 14. they're saying? Huh? No, they do not. Okay, so they're speaking a mystery. Does does Paul not tell them that you need to have understanding? As a matter of fact, he starts the whole discussion on pneumatica and on the spiritual things that I don't want you to be unaware, unknowing, or ignorant. So it would be contradictory <laughs> to come back and say, "But go ahead and do this." Now, this is where we get this. This, by the way, speaking mysteries in the air. Um, we know for a fact that that terminology, that 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 statement. Uh, is not a statement of affirmation, anything positive. At that time, that's a negative statement. That is not a positive. Now, we, we see that because we're trying to make it fit, right? We're trying to make tongues fit. But the question I've always asked is, what is Paul rebuking? Remember, the entire letter is a letter of rebuke. Paul is never saying, you guys are doing a wonderful job. And he's covering this issue of division throughout the entire letter. And so he gets the spiritual gifts and says, you guys are dividing yourselves up on this as well trying to desire the what you think are the are the greater gifts and so forth. What you ought to desire, what you're supposed to desire, is the building up of the body. But then he'll come back and say, well, but go ahead and build yourself up. No, he is speaking. He He's being sarcastic, and he's putting them down. That's why he comes back and says that that very same person who doesn't know what he's saying, he says, you're just speaking to the air. And so he says, what I want you to do as we go down to verses 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that I want you to, instead of praying in a tongue i want you to pray not with a tongue anymore he didn't say now is he necessarily negative in that saying that you shouldn't pray in a tongue what he does nope. say is i want you to pray with understanding well you were praying with your tongue but you didn't know what you were saying so he's clearly knocking that now if someone wants to say well he also wants you to pray in tongues with understanding if you don't know what you're saying, and so I'll, I'll, I'll say this, if anyone is praying in a tongue or speaking in a tongue, by the way, there's never an example of anybody in the Bible ever praying in tongue, but if anyone wants to do anything in a tongue, if you want to take a shower in a tongue, I don't care. If you don't know what you're doing, Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant. And then he comes back uh, later on, 13, 14, 15, and says that I want you to have understanding. I want you to know what you're saying because what you're doing, your mind is unfruitful. So he could not have been saying, he could not have been saying that, uh, one, that you're edifying yourself as, as though that's a good thing. And he could not be saying where he says, let me put it on the screen. He says, for the one who, who speaks in a tongue singular does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands, but in his spirit, or is either his spirit or the spirit, we're not sure, um, because it can be taken, this, the Greek of this can be taken either as his spirit or the spirit. But in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. We're never told right. that we should be doing anything kind of in a mysterious fashion. The only mystery that we know of that's a good mystery is that the Gentiles have salvation. So that's my that's my only critique. And so remember, at the founding of the church, even up until the first century, third century, fourth century, fifth century, remember up until the 20th century church, no one took speaking mysteries was a good thing. No one took that edifying yourself was a good thing. So therein, li therein lies a problem. So now someone comes and says, this is supposed to do. Now the onus is on, on that person to, to tell us, to prove to us, this is what you ought to do. Well, yeah, well, the, the, the only problem I have is with that. And, you know, I, I you know, I, I went through the logos, my logo software, just like you went through yours. And, you know, commentaries, they don't say that that, those mysteries were not uh, known understandings. As a matter of fact, you know, Paul comes back in verse 14 and says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. 
So it's very clear that he's saying that unknown tongues are prayed for because he says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit pray, but my understanding is unfruitful. So he's clearly saying that I pray, I can pray in an unknown tongue where I won't understand it. And, no. and then he goes on, he goes on to say, what is this then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing okay. with the spirit. So he's saying here that there's a way for you and how do you get understanding? Because you have interpretation. Okay, but couple things. he's not saying that you can't pray if you don't have interpretation. Couple, couple things. Because what we're doing is we are omitting everything that was ever said about tongues and about spiritual gifts prior to 1 Corinthians 14. So it's almost like we said, let's just take the entirety of the canon prior to Acts 14. I mean, 1 Corinthians 14, forget it. Acts, I mean, 1 there's Corinthians 14. There's only three chapters though, brother. There's, only, there's only Acts and Corinthians that really deals with tongues. Well, no, it's not. No, it's not. First of all, what did the Bible say about these spiritual gifts? And then even in 1 14, Paul literally references Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28 is clearly about a different language, people speaking different languages. So that yes, part is, is. That, that part is clear also. <laughs> then when we get to John, Jesus says that when you get the spirit, you are going to testify of me. And every other time that we see the Bible speaking about spiritual gifts is for the building up of others. Paul did not say that you guys aren't spiritual and you guys aren't saved. He says that since you desire to be, since you're zealous for the spiritual things, then fine, be zealous for the things that built the body. So he's not saying that, yeah, and I, listen, I was there. I used to, I used to speak in tongues and pray in tongues and so forth. And I thought I was doing something and I felt this joy. The problem is you can do things and not know what it is you're doing that make you unsaved or anything like that, but you can, you can be saved and do things ignorantly, but still with a desire to do the right thing. We do that all the time as, as human beings. We want to do the right things and think we're doing the right things. And then lo and behold, we find out that was the wrong thing. And so what Paul is doing is Paul is saying, listen, he says, if I pray in a tongue, singular tongue, my mind pray, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Well, Paul has been telling us that he doesn't want you to be ignorant. So if so, fine. If you can pray in a tongue and know what you're saying, have at it. Now, by the way, this is still under the guise of speaking in tongues. There's no two gifts, speaking in tongues and then uh, uh, the gift of tongues or speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. No, it's all in the same thing. I, I, I agree. And so previous to, to act to 1 Corinthians 14, also all throughout the history of mankind and even up to the 20th century, tongues have always been an actual language. And Paul brings that in as he gets to, as he brings in Isaiah 28. And so now all of a sudden we change the rules. Why? Because somebody uh, in 1900, in 1906 or 1901 decide that, well, it's not a language. We found out that our speaking in tongues that Agnes's, Agnes Os Osmond, her language wasn't actually Chinese after all. And so how about we go ahead and say, it's not that it's something new. It's an angelic language. We've never heard that before. We are now redefining- but there, but there are two different renderings, even though you said they mean the same thing. You know, the tongues that is spoken of in act, that word is dialecto. It's same different thing. from... It's the same thing, though. It's a different word. It's, it's a but different you word, say but it same means the same. But my, my point why why is, not use the same word, then? Why not well, use the same word? How many times throughout the scriptures do we use different words for the same thing? I... I I, I hear what you're saying. I just don't think that within the, the Greek structure of the same book that you would just automatically use two different words. They, they, there's the dialecto is the one word and there's glossia is the okay. other word. And Let they me ask you a question. Similar... Here's, here's how we can, here's yeah, how we can figure that out. Here's how we can, we can deal with that argument. Let's go to Acts 2 and we're going to see right. two different words used to say the same thing. Okay. So if, if we drop, we see uh, chapter two. Uh, let's let me put it on the screen so everyone else can see as well. So we have the word tongues. Um, it says, Lalain heteros glosis, which is they were uh, to speaking in other languages, right? Then we drop down and we, we know they're speaking in these other languages, right? That part, we know what's happening. And so what do they say? Just, just two verses later, we hear them speaking. Um, I'm sorry, we see the same word, dialecto. 
So the same word dialecto right. in verse six is clearly speaking about languages, clearly speaking about what's happening as they're speaking these different languages. And why would you use that word to give an understanding that it's not the same language? So in other words, this person heard it in, 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 let's go to the, to the languages that are, that are mentioned. Uh, this person heard so you're it saying, in, so, go ahead. Wait a minute. So let me make this clear. So you're saying that the cloven tongues in Acts 2 verse 3 is the same tongue as mentioned in verse 6. I disagree with that. It's not well, the same, that's not the same tongue. Says who? Get, you got you to give a passage because it's talking about the same incident. The same incident is happening. They get these, they, they, the, 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 these cloven tongues or this fire that's on them. And then what do they do? They do it. Remember, Jesus tells them what they're going to do in, in John 15 and Acts 1. Then they go out and do it. He said, you're going to be my witnesses. Where first? In Jerusalem, which is where they are. And then they'll be their witnesses in Samaria, which is what comes next in Acts 8. And then to the rest of the world. Acts 10, Acts 19, and all throughout the scriptures, because now they're going to different parts of the world and they're giving and they're giving the gospel. So here's the problem. If you're going to say that what happens in the first part of Acts 2 is different than what's happening here, you don't have the scriptures to back that up. We're hearing them saying, because remember, look what it says. Go from verse 5 to 6. You're saying from verse 5 to 6 is something different. Verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with, look what it says. Lalane, heterized, glossized. So they're speaking. Now notice these two words, lalane and glossized. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but lalane, glossized. We're going to see them saying, using those same two words all throughout Acts 2. Now, now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men under every nation. And when they heard the sound occurred, the crowd came together and were bewildered because they heard them, each was hearing them um, speaking in their own language. And they were saying, they were astonished. Why aren't all these uh, who are speaking Galileans and so forth. So now let me drop down and notice the words show right back up. Wait, where am I at? Uh, hold on one second. Uh-oh. I want to push the buttons. Notice the... Um... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me just read it uh, through so I don't have to go look because I, I, what I do is I, I erased what I put on here before. So notice what, what's happening. Verse 5. Uh, devout men from every nation, and when they when this sound occurred, which sound? What's the sound that was? So I'll ask you, put you back on the screen. What sound did they hear? Uh oh, oh, Robert left off. I'm sorry, I'm pulling back on. I'm sorry, Robert, you dropped off. So question, Robert. I lost you. I'm sorry, I'm back. In verse five, he says, "Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from under every nation, and when this sound occurred." What sound? The the sound of them speaking in tongues. That's not mm. the same as the cloven tongue. You just you just, it's the only thing that we hear. We hear them in verse. Think about look look what you're saying. And appeared to them verse three tongues uh, as a fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to do what. Speak with other speak. languages or tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Now it's right. going to they say began that they, to speak. Speaking what? So what the sound they were hearing was hold the on, audible hold on, hold on. speaking. What were they speaking? The what, what were they speaking in? According to verse four, what were they speaking? Tongues. What kind of tongues? What do you mean, other tongues? Languages, actual languages. Right, languages. Okay. okay, and so in verse 5, I'm sorry, verse 6, and when this sound occurred, what sound? Them speaking in other tongues. Okay, so now, verse 6, they were speaking in other tongues, and at the, at the very end of verse 6, what do they call those? Other dialectos, di dialects. The very same word that's used in, in 1 Corinthians. And so dialect and languages, it's the same thing. They're referring no, to the same thing. No, in 1 Corinthians, they don't use dialecto. They use glossia. It's too, they use a different word is what I'm trying to say. They don't even, use dialecto in, in, in Corinthians. E, okay, e, even, to my, even to my point, even to my point, glossize, lalane, glossize is the exact same words that's used in Acts. So we're talking about the same thing in Acts 2 and, and 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. 
We can't then all of a sudden say, you know what, talking about something different. No, it's not. If they're using the exact same words that were used in uh, Acts 2, even if you want to include the longer ending of Mark, the same two words that's used there. So speaking in these languages is what they're talking about in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, as well as Acts 2. Are you with me? Okay. So I got you. I don't I don't fully agree, but I got you. I don't think mysteries are babblings, and I think that dialecto is used in Acts, uh, glossia is used in the other verses, and and, and, and including when well, the let's say this. tongues came closing this, tongues came down. This is what I've said to people that that because I think you gotta fight. I think a person has to fight to disagree. So I'll say this. And I, and I gotta let you go so I get to the next people. But yep. If a person wants, if if you just dead set on speaking in tongues and you feel that's done the best for you, fine. You better understand what you're saying according to the scripture. If there's no understanding, no explanation, no interpretation, then what you're doing goes against scripture. Amen. And oh, by the way, if you did it in private, listen. If you guys spoke in tongues in private, wouldn't be an issue. We wouldn't even talk about it. I wouldn't know. But then you come out in the streets and you go to Hamana, then you know what? Now, now I now you brought me in because you brought my ears in. Now, what is this you're saying? And if you're saying this has to do with the Lord, now that's my daddy. So I want to know, right? Because if I came in, listen. Well, you in, and I agree. I agree it shouldn't be spoken in public, but I believe it can be spoken in private. Okay. Well, I'll I'll I'll, I'll leave it there. Listen, brother, that was good. Uh I I, I would love to keep you on, but I I've got to move to the next one.